I did study music composition in undergrad at the Cleveland Institute of Music, and I studied with a composer named Donald Erb. I actually only looked at two schools for composition, primarily because I couldn't play any instruments. And the majority of music composition programs, as you'd expect, require you to be proficient on some kind of instrument to get admission. So I just didn't look at any schools that required me to even touch a piano, really, in my audition. And uh, I auditioned at a very small school in uh, Westerville, Ohio, where I was from, uh, called Otterbein College, and also at Cleveland Student Music. And I got into CIM. I got into both, but I went to CIM. The way the audition worked was you would just send a portfolio of your music, and the faculty would look at it and then invite you for an interview. But I never had to play my music at all, other than recordings of it. I had to take a theory test, but that was really it. There was no touching an instrument. Undergrad was interesting because it was really the first time I had formal music training at all. And it wasn't just formal music training, I was at a music conservatory, like a 300 student school that is just for, you know, performing, you know, all those people want to get jobs in orchestras or composers want to, you know, be full-time composers. Even though I had never studied theory or anything or orchestration, I spent so much of my free time through high school and middle school just trying to learn those things on my own that I didn't, I don't think I felt like I was behind because everyone as a freshman, you know, is less good at these things than you think you are when you get there. I think all of us kind of felt like, wow, this is hard. Um, so I didn't feel behind. And I also, I think I was just so hungry to really finally have formal training that I just absorbed it like crazy and was so, so excited about it. Ear training was hard for me and remained hard for me through grad school. Um, that was always very scary, but uh, everything else I, I enjoyed a lot and I think worked really hard to like just find, just be a sponge when I finally had exposure to those, those teachers. I did not write my first band piece until I was 30. I had gone to Juilliard for grad school, and the studio that I was in at Juilliard, there were four of us in John Corleone's studio, and it was me, Stephen Bryant, who writes a lot of band music, uh, Jonathan Newman, who writes quite a bit of band music also, and Eric Whitaker. And Eric always, from the time we were at Juilliard together in our early 20s, would say, you know, you guys should all be writing band music. It's amazing. And he was working on Ghost Train at the time, and I remember him playing a recording of Ghost Train for me in my dorm room. And you're like, well, that's really cool. Anyway, and I was just done. I was like, so I had never heard that music live. Juilliard doesn't have a wind ensemble. Cleveland Student Music didn't have a wind ensemble. So I never heard collegiate level bands play anything. Eric would say, oh, you guys should be writing band music. And I would say, oh, Eric, I'm writing orchestral music. I don't need to write band music. And he would, you know, be like, okay, and he'd get his Maserati and drive away. He doesn't actually drive Maserati, but in my head, it was clear that like he was a different thing entirely, even just in all of Juilliard. He was just like this superstar already in grad school. And I thought, well, I don't know how to, I don't know band, so I'm not gonna do that. And I was writing mostly for dance companies through my work at Juilliard, there was a class for that, and then I started doing it professionally after school, writing chamber music pieces for dance companies. A lot of the pieces I wrote for dance companies eventually became band pieces. I wrote them as chamber pieces and then I reworked them as band works eventually. So the way I learned to orchestrate um, is really from my, my uh, work-study job in undergrad in Cleveland was I worked in the library the music library. And I always requested to sit at the CD desk um, back when there were CDs. And so I would, every shift, I would get some CD off the stacks behind me, and then I would go into the music stacks and I would get the score, and I would just study that piece, listen to the piece over and over again, just following the score and lo looking at different instruments. And the one I learned the most from was Ravel's Daphnis and Chloe. And so I would listen to that piece and only follow the flutes. Listen all the way through, just look at how Ravel wrote for flute, piccolo to C flute, to that has alto flute in it, and how there, there's a, pro, a sequence where he goes through all the flutes to make it sound like a single instrument, and to study how he would dovetail from one to the other so you couldn't hear that it was going from piccolo eventually to alto flute and back. And, uh, and then I would listen just to the double reeds and listen to it again and just hear what he does with the oboes and the English horns and the bassoons. and just study, oh, that's what the oboe sounds like in that register, the way Ravel approaches it. At that dynamic level, you get this kind of a balance. So that was how I learned, really, the most orchestration was not even 
writing for orchestra initially, it was studying master works and following the scores while I was doing it. For percussion, my best friend in undergrad was a percussion major. And so we would just hang out in the percussion studio and he would just show me crazy stuff he could do. And that, I was just like hooked. And um, he could also do, he had a really cool trick he could do. He could do any four cross rhythms in his limbs at a drum set at a time. And uh, that's a useless trick, but it was really cool. And that started teaching me about cross rhythms and things like that. And uh, so I think that was, he was a big influence on my writing. And he was an amazing drummer. He's the professional drummer in New York now. And uh, he's the one who taught me, so I apologize to all the percussionists who may see this, if you've ever tried to play any of my hi-hat parts, they're that hard because of this guy named Damien Bassman who could do amazing stuff on hi-hat, and uh, that's why I love hi-hat so much, is because of my best friend in undergrad. Yeah.